Use multiple instances of ControlNet at the same time. Hello my friends, how are you doing? So just yesterday I made a video where I showed you different ways on how to create poses, including Days 3D giving you amazing control and reimagining movie scenes. Just mind blown. This is technology we couldn't even have imagined a month ago. Now you can use multiple instances, multiple layers of ControlNet in Automatic 11.11 at the same time. This also comes with a wealth of new adjustments that are just crazy on the potential they have. Let's check it out. So of course the first thing you want to do here is to update ControlNet. First of all, if you don't have ControlNet installed, check out this video where I show you how to use it, how it works. If you want to update it on the other hand, you want to click here on the extensions tab and here you have all your extensions. Click on check for updates. This will check if there's anything new. And then you want to click here on apply and restart UI. For me, it was also required to restart the command window because of the update for ControlNet. So check out the command window if it is asking you to press enter and then just restart it. After this, to activate the multiple layers of ControlNet, you need to go to settings. And then here on the left side, you have ControlNet. Click on that and here you can see multi controlnet max models amount. So you want to drag this slider over. Right now I have it at 2 but you can go even higher. Now when you click here on apply settings you need to restart automatic 11.11 again. And then starting it again with the web UI minus user dot bad of course. After this is done and you restart your web UI, you can see here you have control net zero and when you scroll down you have control net one. And of course you can use them at the same time. Now another thing that might stand out to you is that the design of the interface is a little bit different. So now we have the image up on top here. You have these different selections and below that you can see that you also have new choices here and they give you amazing power. For example, we have now depth and depth layers. Now when you click on layers, the interesting thing here is that you have a slider for remove near and also remove background. Now what this does is it checks out the depth in the image and here you can see the source image and the background removal slider. Now in the zero value, all of the images included, but when I set this to 50, this will try to remove the background as depth map is finding depth in the image. Now this doesn't always work. So in this case, it is easier because the background has bokeh and the foreground is clearly differentiated from the background, but it is still very useful and works fine in a lot of cases. This has the added benefit that you can now place that character on any kind of background and don't have to cut him out of the image beforehand, which makes of course the process a lot more fluent. This might also be super interesting for being used when you create videos to separate the character from the background and then render the background separately with different settings. Now one thing I would like to see here for the next update is to have these sliders give me a live preview because it takes quite some time to make a test render even with one step for each of these maps and then do another test render to see what kind of image you actually get from that. Of course, as an added benefit, this can be combined with Open Pose Editor. Like I said, check out my last video where I explain how to use that. So in this case, as you know, you can use these points here to adjust the pose. And in my case, I found that send to control net doesn't work if you have multiple control nets. So what I do instead is to download this as a PNG file and then drag it into the control net instance I want to use. Now for that, of course, it is very important that when you drag this in here that you set your preprocessor to none because you already have a preprocessed image and then select for the model the open pose model. After that is pretty much the same as before and you can go on rendering and creating poses on the fly. Now of course this also adds new controls to other modes like MLSD for architecture. In this case we have here a resolution slider and this actually defines with what resolution the image is scanned. So the resolution of the map is not going to be higher but the details in the map are going to be higher. Below that you have a threshold setting and this will help you decide how much detail you want to have in the image. So the lowest setting you can have here with 0.01 gives you the most detail and the higher you go, the less detail you have unless there's no detail left. 
Below that, we have a distance slider, but I didn't really get any kind of different results out of that. So let's talk a little bit about the results that I'm getting here. And for this, I'm using a picture of a house with two doors. Here we can see a resolution of 200. Now this is not changing the resolution of the map, but the resolution of the details in the map. So the output resolution of the map is still 768. On the left side, you can see the AI image I got. In the middle, you see how this is a very pixelated output with a resolution of just 200. And on the right side, you can see the open pose input. Here we have the exact same setup with all of the same settings, but the resolution is now 600. And you can see that this not just gave me a finer resolution for my map, but also changed the output of the AI. With 1200, again, we get a finer map and also the lines are getting thinner and thinner and the output changed another time. Here's a comparison of all of the different maps that have been created and of the AI images that resulted from these maps. And you can see there's quite a difference between them. This absolutely helps, of course, with designing different scenes without having to change the image. Just by moving the sliders around, you can decide how much detail of the scene you want to have in your image. Apart from the resolution, we also have the threshold. Now this means how sensitive the map is to details in your image. The lowest value is 0.05 and you can see here that we get some of the details from the image. And also in our render output, these details are reflected. But then of course when we have a higher threshold, less details of the image make it into our map and again, this is reflected in our output, where now we have some parts of it, but only roughly inspired. Again, this of course can be helpful artistically to create different outputs from the exact same image. Another cool thing that the update of control that is adding is weight and guidance. So now you have two different sliders. Here I balance them. So in the first one, we have a weight of 0.5 versus a guidance scale of one. In the second one, I turn it around, weight 1, guidance scale 0 0.5. And in the last image, this is weight and guidance scale both 1. This again is based on the photo with the two doors. Of course, this is a very abstract scenario. You wouldn't usually render something like that. But I chose something very simple so you can actually see the difference of the output. And now because we have weight and guidance for each of the control net instances, you can also balance them with each other to define how much importance the background should have, the character or object should have. Now, another cool thing you can do here, and I can't really show you this because I'm using my camera right now, is that there is a camera icon down here. And with this, you can actually take photos with your webcam and then render them as poses into your AI art that can make posing a lot quicker. So my friends, this is absolutely crazy. There is so much to explore, so much to do. I will try until the weekend to get my two computers set up running here so I can stream and render at the same time and we can explore these possibilities in my live stream on Sunday more. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. And of course, don't forget to join my Facebook group and my Discord. See you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.